Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site-wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. You can still hear that I'm nasally because this thing just will not go away, but at least Eric has brought Moira. He's keeping Shizo Death Storehouse, Two Swamps, Access Tunnel, Deadly Dispute, Victimize, and Gix, Yawgmoth Praetor. I have decided to borrow Dom's Miracle deck, keeping Verdant Catacombs, Bright Climb Pathway, Reanimate, Frasca Golgari Queen, Eidolon of Blossoms, A Swamp, and Smuggler's Share. Matt has built the Council of the Four, keeping an island, Reliquary Tower, Deserted Beach, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Bond of Discipline, Whirler Rogue, and a Serum Visions. And last but not least, the person who supplied me the deck I'm playing, Dom is playing Maelstrom Wanderer. He keeps a Bloodstained Mire, Lanawar Elves, Ketria Triome, Mountain, Xenagos God of Revels, and Durnan of the Yawning Portal. Eric wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays an Urborg. I draw, playing a Verdant Catacombs, and cracking it to find an overgrown tomb which I have come in to play untapped. I take a total of three so I can play a Fintorn Elves and pass. Matt plays a Command Tower and casts Serum Visions. He draws and then scries two to the bottom, passing. Dom's got a Bloodstained Mire, copying my turn 1, but cracks it for a Taiga instead, and casts a Lanoir Elves, having only taken 1. Eric plays an Access Tunnel, and taps 2 mana for a Zulapur Cutthroat. I draw, and play a Plains. I cast Smuggler's Share, and pass to Matt. Matt's got an Island for turn after he draws, and casts an Ever Forlowing Chalice, kicking it for one and passing. Dom draws and then plays a tapped Ketria Triome. He then plays a Talisman of Creativity and passes. Eric's got Shizo Death Storehouse and enough mana to cast Moira, his commander. He passes when she resolves. I play a Bright Climb Pathway and then tap four mana for Idol on a Blossoms drawing a card as it enters before passing to Matt. Matt draws and plays a deserted beach for his land for turn. He's also got a 4-drop, paying Whirler Rogues and making two Thopters as it comes in. Dom plays a Flooded Strand, cracking it and losing one to find a tropical island. He then casts Xenagos, and after that, he passes. Entering his end step, I get to make a treasure token from the Smuggler's Share. Eric draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Deadly Dispute, sacrificing the Cutthroat to draw two and make a treasure. We also each lose one to the Cutthroat Drain, and he gains one. Eric follows up by using the treasures to help cast Gix, and moving to combat, he swings Moira at Dom for three. Dom can't block, so Eric's able to connect and bring back his Zulaport Cutthroat, and then draws a card off of Gix. With all that, Eric passes, and during his end step, I get to draw an extra card thanks to the Smuggler's Share. I draw and play a Swamp. I then play a Jeweled Lotus and crack it to help cast my commander, Merkel. I follow that up with an Esper Sentinel, and then going to combat, I swing the Eidolon of Blossoms at Dom. He's got nothing to block with, and takes the two, and I draw a card off of Gix. After that, I pass. Matt plays a Reliquary Tower for turn, and then taps enough mana for the Council of Four. He then goes to combat, and swings the Stopters at me, drawing a card off of Gix as well, and passes once he's done. Dom's main phase has Durnin come in, and he then goes to combat and puts the Xenagos trigger onto Durnin. Durnin then goes at Eric's for six, and in response to the Durnin trigger, Dom casts a Worldly Tutor, paying the one to deny me the draw. This lets him put an Apex Devastator on top, and he then exiles it with Undaunted. Combat damage then happens, with Eric taking 6 and Dom passing. 
Eric draws and goes to combat as well. He swings the Zulport Cutthroat at a Dom for one to draw a card from the Gix trigger, and then plays a Deserted Temple after combat. Eric then also plays a Commander's Plate, paying the one to deny me the draw, and then equips it onto his Commander. He moves to his end step, and I get to draw a card from the Smuggler's Share. I draw and play a Misty Rainforest, cracking it and losing one for a forest. I then cast a Faber or Elder, and pass. During my end step, Matt discards Honor of the Pure to cast a Force of Virtue for free. Matt draws, and plays an island. He plays an Anvil of Bogardin, which because of how his commander works, means that on everyone's draw step, because they're drawing two cards, he'll be getting a knight token thanks to his commander. He swings the Thopters and the knight at Dom, who takes the hit. And Dom then pays three... And Matt then pays three life to draw three cards, plus an extra card from the Council of the Four. With nothing else, he passes. Dom draws two and discards a card, and then plays a forest. He's able to cast the reduced costing Apex Devastator, and he cascades into a Finale of Devastation, which does nothing, a Genesis Wave, which also does nothing, and an Elemental Bond, and an Exploration. He casts the Bond and Exploration, and Matt then casts a Cryptic Command to counter the actual spell, the Apex Devastator, not to mention taps all of our creatures. With a pretty uneventful turn, Dom then passes. Eric draws two and discards one to the Anvil. He then plays a Swamp and casts a Demon's Disciple, and I sacrifice the Esper Sentinel. Matt sacrifices a Thopter, and Dom sacrifices Lanowar Elves, while Eric sacrifices the Disciple itself. The Sentinel returns as an enchantment thanks to my commander, and I get to draw a card. Eric then goes to combat, swinging Moira at Matt, who can't block, and takes the six. Moira then brings back the Disciple, which has me sacrificing my Fabro Elder, which comes back as an enchantment as well, and Matt sacrifices his Thopter, while Dom sacrifices Durnan. Eric sacrifices the Disciple to its own ability, and once that's all done, puts out a Carrion Feeder, and passes. I draw two, and discard one, and then play a Forest. I cast a Diabolic Intent, sacrificing the Idol on a Blossoms, and bringing it back as a non-creature enchantment, and drawing a card. I then go to Tutor for a card, and once that's done, cast an Avacyn's Pilgrim, and then a Thieving Amalgam, passing a Matt. Matt manifests his top card to me, and then draws two, and discards one. He plays an island, and taps two for a Mind Stone. He then has enough for Jace the Mind Sculptor, and once he's out, down ticks the Planeswalker to bounce my commander back to hand. He then moves to combat, and we're all suddenly aware that the knights actually don't have vigilance for some reason. With that, Matt decides not to attack, and passes. Dom manifests his top card to me, and then draws two, and discards one. Eric then uses Infernal Grasp, and kills my Amalgam to stop any future manifests. Dom then moves to his main phase, and plays a forest before casting Genesis Ultimatum, looking at his top five. He puts a Forest, Polluted Delta, Bloom Tender, and Ilharg into play, and then moves to combat after that. He puts the Xenagos Trigger onto Ilharg, and swings the Piggy at me. This allows him to put Prime Speaker Zagana into play, which as it enters, sees Ilharg, and then draws him 13 cards. The Zagana is also swinging at Eric, who chumps with the Zulaport Cutthroat. I then take the 12, and we all get drained for one as the Zulaport Cutthroat dies, and after that, Dom passes. Eric draws two, and discards one, and plays a Phyrexian Tower. He then casts Plaguecrafter, and I sacrifice a Manifested card, while Matt sacrifices a Knight, and Dom sacrifices Ilharg, putting it third from the top. Eric then casts Victimize, bringing back Zulaport Cutthroat and Witch of the Moors, by sacrificing his Carrion Feeder. Going to combat, he swings Moira at Matt, which after it connects, 
brings back the Play Crafter. Responding to the Sacrifice trigger, Matt uses Pongify on the Witch of the Moors, giving him a monkey instead, and we all sacrifice our creatures, and after that, Eric passes. I draw my two, and discard one, and play a Command Tower. I recast Murkul, and then play Vraska Gugari Queen. I then sacrifice my Manifested card, which comes back as a Nyx Bloom Ancient. I then play out a Mana Crypt, and get to tap it for 6 colorless mana, using 2 of it for a Felwar Stone. I then tap the Felwar Stone for 3 mana to help cast Animate Dead, bringing back the Thieving Amalgam. I then follow it up with Reanimate on Eric's Witch of the Moors, taking 5 to bring that back as well. With all those reanimated creatures back, I then pass turn. Matt manifests his top card, and then draws 2 and discards 1. He plays a Plains, and casts Bond of Discipline, tapping all of our creatures, and giving his lifelink. He then moves to combat, and Matt swings enough creatures at me to take me out, and swings enough at Eric to deal 6. This has his life total jumping up to 40 thanks to all that lifelink. In his post-combat main phase, he casts Angel of Jubilation, then brainstorms with Jace, and with nothing else, has to pass. Dom draws two, discards one, and plays a forest. He then casts the Maelstrom Wanderer, and cascades into a Mystic Remora, and a Nature's Claim, which he uses to remove the Force of Virtue, and Matt gains four life. Dom then plays Silvala, and activates the Elf to make seven blue mana, using it to overload a Cyclonic Rift. Going to combat, Dom puts the Xenagos trigger onto the Wanderer, and then swings it and Xenagos at Matt. With the board now completely shifted in Dom's favor, he passes to Eric. Eric draws and plays a Swamp. He then replays Gix and Moira, and then casts a new card with Blood Artist. He passes after that. Matt draws for turn, and replays the Anvil of Bogardin again. And then casts a Cone of Cold. He tries to roll above 10 to stop Dom from attacking again, but instead just ends up tapping all the creatures for his turn. He then plays a Ponder, and looks at his top 3, and decides to shuffle and then draw. With nothing else, he passes. Dom draws his 2, and discards 1, and plays an Island, and then a Cinder Glade. He then casts a Jessica's Will, Exiling the Great Henge, Genesis Wave, and Garuk's Uprising, and then makes 18 red mana thanks to Matt's hand size. He dumps all of that mana into Genesis Wave, and flips into Nezahal, Itali, and Tamur Ascendancy as the highlights, not to mention drawing 6 cards from Ascendancy and Elemental Bond. Going to combat, Dom swings the Wanderer at Matt for lethal commander damage, and uses the Zendigo's pump on Itali to take Eric out as well with the rest of the creatures. Game review time. So I think this is actually one of the few examples of someone using Cyclonic Rift in a way that I'm not upset about, because it doesn't stall at the game and just needlessly make us play extra turns. In Dom's case, he basically used it as a way to clear the board and smash in for face. Other than that, Dom's deck seemed like a pretty stereotypical Maelstrom Wanderer deck with a lot of good value cards, although I will say him hitting that Genesis Wave and Finale of Devastation off the Apex Devastator was really funny. Matt's Council of the Four deck really just wanted to make a bunch of Knight tokens and then use Anthem to make them massive, which is why he had so many effects that allowed other people to draw, like the Anvil of Bogardin. It was cool to see, and he did actually take me out with one good swing. It's just a shame he didn't get very many Anthems outside of that Force of Virtue. Eric's Moira deck is actually getting a little bit less mean. You see some of the earlier iteration of the deck in this game, where he was using the Plaguecrafter effects to basically stall up people's boards. There have been a couple games where we've played against him where he basically kept recurring that over and over again, and it was absolutely backbreaking. No one could establish any kind of creature base, and it was just him swimming for small amounts of damage over the course of several turns. He won, but it just kind of made the game long and unfun for everyone else. Murakul Lord of Bones is an interesting commander, and I do like the Abzan Enchantress package in the deck. 
I did get to play one of Dom's favorite wing cons in the deck, which is the Thieving Amalgam, although I think as soon as everyone saw it, and with Dom knowing his own deck, I suddenly became a massive target. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.